Alrighty, if you're just joining us, this is the third part of a third and final part of a three part series that I've been running on um, how the, my business interprets the CPET. Um, in part one, I showed how we calculated VO2 max. In part two, I calculated um, the first and second ventilatory thresholds, VT1, VT2, using the V-slope method. And now I'm going to show another criterion, um, which I use to confirm the V-slope method. Okay, so I call this one, this one's called um, criterion two for the ventilatory thresholds. So criterion two is the point where PET O2 and VE O2 increase, while PET CO2 and VE CO2 remain constant. All right, so PET O2, um, that's just shorthand for um, end tidal partial pressure. So that's the partial pressure of the gases oxygen and CO2. Okay, VE, VO2, that is where VE stands for the total amount of gas um, that's going through the lungs per minute divided by the the part the volume of oxygen which is going through the lungs per minute okay so it gives you a graph which I'm about to display and hopefully that'll make more sense when I put it up there so we're going to be comparing these two graphs to oxygen so total volume absolute volume of oxygen consumption so the first one we want to find is PET and O2 and PET CO2 so I go insert recommended charts scatter alright and we get this graph here so before we forget what it's called I'm just going to label this so this is PET O2 versus PETCO2. Now, to make it a bit clearer, I like to put this, um, the, the CO2, PETCO2 on a secondary access. So to do that, you right click on that, you go format data series, and just over here, you'll click on secondary access. All right, that's our first one. It's also good to label your axes. So when you're displaying this uh, graph in the client's report, they'll be able to understand what is what. So this bottom line here, this horizontal, we're going to give that a label. So the axis title, primary horizontal. This is going to be VO2 and always put the units in so it's milliliters per minute so we we'll label that one then we're going to label our PET O2 so that's this one axis title primary vertical so this is PET O2 and the units on this one are millimeters of mercury. So that's the pressure. And then on this one, so this axis is PETCO. PET CO2 and we'll give the value of millimeters of mercury all right so now that one's done we've got to put in out uh, so this relate this criteria we're looking at two different plots okay so the next plot we're going to look at 
is VO2. That's we're going to remain on this bottom line, but this time with the VE divided by the VO2 and the VE VCO2. So we go insert recommended chart scatter, bang, and then we go to here again. So before we forget what it is, let's label it. So this is VEO2 versus VEVCO2. Now because these compare well and they're around the same mar margins, we will just have the one primary axis, but we are, okay? And these are actually unitless, okay? So VE, VCO2 and VE, VO2 are unitless, but we'll add a chart element and we'll label them ventilatory equivalents. Ventilatory equivalents. All right. Ventilatory equivalents. All right. Then <clears throat> we're going to copy these graphs into our report so control C and then bring it over to the report and control V now it's important because we're going to be measuring these two graphs up against each other that we've got them evenly spread okay so the best way to do that is we go insert shape a line we get a line and we draw a straight line, straight up and down, perfectly vertical. And then we can see that this bottom graph isn't quite in line with our top one. So we're gonna need that to be the case to be able to compare them. And I just, so you just grab the graph and move it slightly across. Now let's check the other side. And it's nowhere near it. So, we'll move this one across. So now we can compare the two against each other. I'm just gonna make sure that they are even. Just like that. All right, they're pretty good. All right, so the first point we're looking for is we go along this blue line, which is PETO2, and we look at the lowest point before it starts coming back up. All right, and we notice that they both match up. That's what we're looking for. So you can see in this top graph, the bottom one before it starts coming up matches the same as the VE VO2. Can you see that? All right, they're coming up together. Now we're looking for the point where the yellow line is pretty stable. So it's not really that stable around there. Okay, so it's sort of coming up, but in the middle there, they're not quite perfectly in line, but they're reasonably together. All right, so we're gonna call that one our VE, uh, VT1. And just so we can see exactly where that pops up, we are going to format major grid lines, add minor grid lines. So that way we can see each point measured between that. So between 2000 and 3000, 
it's a big area to sort of just eyeball, all right? So you gotta try and find the point, the value of, VE, of, of VT1, which is in this case, so you can sort of see that little line there. So that would be 2,200, 2,400, and I'm gonna give it 2,500. So VT1 using Criterion 2, is approx 2,500 milliliters of O2. So it occurs at 2,500 milliliters O2. And if we look up here, in our first one on the V slope, VT1 uh, came up as 2,400. So they're pretty close together, okay? You're never going to know exactly where it is, okay, because you are just eyeballing it at the end of the day, but it gives you a sort of an indication, okay? The next one we're going to do is VT2. So we've got to insert a shape, another line, and this one, let's draw it up here. We are looking for the point where it makes a secondary inflection. So you can see how here it sort of balances itself out and then it does another shoot up. That's the point we're looking for at the point where the yellow one is maintaining constant. So that's pretty good. All right, and we can see down here with our grid lines, that would be 3,200, 3,400, 3,600, about 3,700, I'm going to say. Is approx 3,700 milliliters of O2. So, and we can compare that to what we got up here. So we got the same. So that worked out pretty well. So in our first criterion, VT2 came back at 3,700 mils. In this one, 3,700 mils. So they match, they confirm each other. So I'm gonna say VT2 equals 3,700 milliliters of O2. So that's where the point of VT2 occurs. VT1, we're just gonna get the average of the two. So to do that, we go 2,500, which is what we found just then using criterion two, and we add it to two, criterion one, which was 2,400. So plus 2,400, and we divide those by two, and that's going to give us our average, which will be 2450 mils of O2. Okay, so we find our midpoint between those averages. Once we've got those markers, alone that doesn't really tell us much, okay? So we want to tell the athlete at what point in their intensity they cross these thresholds. So they're not gonna know when they're consuming 2450 mils of O2 or 3700 mils of O2. They want to know at what heart rate and also what intensity they cross these lines. So we'll do the first one first. VT1, we go to here, which was 2450. So we go along here and we go to the VO2 column, and which is volume of oxygen in absolute terms and we look for 2450 which was what we determined was um, VT1. So we can see here it's somewhere between 2315 and 2545. So we pick one of them okay and that happened at the 156 second mark. Unfortunately, we don't have one that's exactly in between, so you've just got to pick one. These ranges will hopefully get you 
a pretty good approximation of where VT1 occurs once we compare this to the power outputs at each time point. So 156 seconds, VT1 occurred. So then we go back into our report and we go to our table. So this is at each time point, their wattage. So let's just, I've forgotten what that was, 156. So at 156, our VT1 occurred. Okay, so that is just here, which happened at 142 watts. So I had this highlighted from the round before. So it came back exactly the same, 142 watts. So we just say, oh, 142 watts. Now for VT2, VT2 occurred at 3,700 mils. So we, same deal, go to our oxygen column, 3,700 mils we're looking for. So the threshold for 3,700 is closest to there, which is 512. At 512 seconds, so which is post this point, it was here. So at 255 um, watts, we reached ventilatory threshold two. So they both matched up with what we found in criterion one, which is what we like to see. So, or, uh, what was it? It was 255 watts. So we can also, for that um, threshold, we can tell them what heart rate they were sitting at as well. So we can go back here, and then we just simply find the heart rate column. which is here, which for this athlete was 168. So, or heart rate of 168. Because the athletes will often like to know that because they're not gonna be carrying around um, a watt meter. They're not gonna know exactly where they're at watts wise. So giving them a heart rate value, which they can use their watches to, to gauge where their training zones are can be quite useful so that's something else i like to throw in there where i can all right guys i hope that gives you some insight into the processes that i use to create a report if you have other ideas that you use please feel free to share i'm, I'm definitely willing to learn um like to hear your input and um yeah if you haven't done so already give it a bit of a subscribe and because I'm going to be putting out regular content around the exercise physiology space and just different tips and tricks to improve your own performance as well. So stay tuned, guys. Until next time, take care.